It has been nearly 30 years since TV news anchor Jody Hoosen Troop went missing on her way to work in Mason City. It remains one of the highest, mo uh, most high profile cold cases in our region. Private investigator Steve Ridge has dedicated many years into this case. Tonight he is announcing he's also dedicating money as well in the form of a $25,000 reward. And joining me now live is Steve Ridge to talk more about this. Steve, how do you think this reward will, can help bring us more answers and possibly solving this case? Well, I guess the saying that money talks uh, may be appropriate in this situation, and I hate to look at it in that uh, cold, harsh way, but uh, I believe that uh, there is active knowledge uh, in the community, um, at, at, the, at least one person and possibly two or three do have information. Doesn't mean they're directly involved, but they have been reluctant to come forward. And my hope is that by pledging this $25,000, we're, we're only trying to locate Jody's remains. We, we are not at this point seeking necessarily a prosecution, an arrest, indictment, or conviction, which is usually the threshold for a reward. That's what you often hear that, you know, for the arrest and conviction. This is plain and simply to find her remains. And we think that if we can locate her remains, that we probably will ultimately resolve the case and may technically solve it with a conviction. Steve, why has this case remained so close to you? Why dedicate uh, more time and resources to this when it's been nearly 30 years? Well, I became involved in this case uh, sometime back when I was uh, very busy full time with my uh, media consulting practice. And when I finally stepped away from that practice in late 19, uh, I decided that I should secure my license for private investigation, uh, which was really an extension of my career as an investigative reporter. That's really where I started. And uh, you, Laura, know that space pretty well. You're an award-winning investigative reporter. Uh, and many of the skills cross over. And as I explored the case, and after having sought Joanne Nathy, uh, her, her endorsement of my work and blessing, um, I became more acquainted with her and I saw firsthand the pain and agony associated with this among so many family members and friends and associates and former coworkers. And I just have not been able to let go. Uh, so. Here I am, I'm trying to find ways to give back, and this is one that I can do. And Steve, you mentioned this uh, earlier, you believe someone, or maybe a number of people, know something. Why do you think they have not come forward yet? Because in the past you've mentioned, you believe we can have an arrest this year. We, you believe we can have an arrest on the 25th, 26th, 27th anniversary. Why do you think these people have not come forward yet, if they know anything about what happened? Well, I think there can be a lot of reasons. I think uh, fear is number one, uh, perhaps min mistrust of law enforcement and people that they might have to work with. But I think time uh, has made some of that subside because if they were fearful of people 30 years ago, those people are much older and you know not in a position to harm them probably in any realistic way. I think guilt can be a factor. Um, and I think it's hard to keep a secret, plain and simply. Um, and so I, I really believe that uh, at least two people have very, very critical information in this case. Uh, and in the last year, I did get a confession from someone who believes that they actually destroyed evidence in the case. So I'm making progress, and I think we just have to keep the pressure on. So you just mentioned you, you think you know someone. Who, who do you think? You've obviously covered this extensively, done several in-depth interviews with people of interest or even people in the community. Who do you think did this to Jody? Well, I have identified uh, a total of seven people that are on my radar. Uh, five of them uh, remain on my radar in a very strong way. And it, I get down to three people who uh, are most likely. But to go beyond that at this juncture, I think could jeopardize the investigation. And that's the last thing that I want to do. I, I do have confidence 
that law enforcement would like to see this case solved. I think that it's elusive because what exists today would be largely circumstantial evidence, and I can understand why a prosecutor would be reluctant to take a case uh, of this controversial nature um, you know, into a courtroom with an uncertain outcome. And this $25,000 is your own money. How, how can someone in the public uh, move forward with this? Uh, do they contact Mason City Police? That's right. I have asked that people not contact me. I have heard from many people in the last 24 to 48 hours, and that's fine. But I encourage everyone to contact uh, the Mason City Police Department uh, to share the information there. I think that it will be well handled and safeguarded. I don't think there's any risk associated with going to the police. And that is the proper agency with the jurisdiction uh, to take the steps to uh, secure the remains and, and see where we go from here. All right, Steve Ridge again offering up a $25,000 reward for the remains of missing TV news anchor Jody Hussentrude. Steve, thank you for your time. Very good to be with you. Thank you very much, Laura.